Hi everyone, how is it going? And today we're going to talk about all the best possible choices you can make in GTA 5. To be honest, there aren't many, and they don't affect the plot much, but some will improve your experience. Let's start. Let's start with the mission A Starlet in Vinewood, which is a Strangers and Freaks mission for Franklin. This mission is unlocked after collecting all 50 letter scraps hidden around Los Santos and Blaine County, which reveal the mystery of Leonora Johnson, a starlet who was murdered in 1975 by a famous movie director named Peter Dreyfus. I talked about this previously too. In this mission, Franklin goes to Dreyfus's house in Vinewood Hills to confront him about his crime. Dreyfus is meditating in the backyard and thinks that Franklin is there to perform some sexual favors for him. But when Franklin shows him the letter scraps, he panics and tries to run away. At this point, you have a choice. Either kill or spare Dreyfus. So, what's the best choice? Well, it depends on your moral compass and your preference. If you kill Dreyfus, you will get a gold medal for the mission and a sense of justice for Leonora Johnson. You will also get a news report on the radio and a newspaper article that confirmed Dreyfus's death and his link to the murder. However, you will also lose the opportunity to interact with Dreyfus again, as he has some interesting dialogue and personality. If you spare Dreyfus, you will not get a gold medal for the mission, and you will let a murderer go free. You will also get a different news report on the radio, and a newspaper article that say that Dreyfus is preparing a comeback, and that the rumors of his confession are false. Also, you will also get a chance to meet Dreyfus again, as he will send you an email thanking you for sparing him, and inviting you to his new movie premiere. You can then go to the premiere and talk to him, or even kill him there if you change your mind. Personally, I think the best choice is to kill Dreyfus, because he deserves to pay for what he did, and because I don't care about his movies, or his emails. The next choice you will have, is abandonment issues. This is the final therapy session between Michael DeSanta and his shrink, Dr. Isaiah Friedlander, and it gives the player a choice to either kill or spare the doctor after he reveals that he is leaving Los Santos and selling Michael's case notes to a TV show. Talk about betrayal. But before we get into that, let's recap the background of this mission and how it affects Michael's story arc. Abandonment Issues is unlocked after completing the mission's legal trouble, reuniting the family, and the Bureau raid. Unlike previous therapy sessions, Dr. Friedlander will not call Michael to announce its availability. An icon will simply appear over his office. It can be completed at any point in the storyline, even after the end of the storyline, which unlocks some unique dialogue. During the session, Dr. Friedlander asks Michael what he wants, to which Michael responds that he wants to be happy with his life, but also wants to continue his life of crime. Friedlander asks Michael what the source of his conflict is, and Michael's answer will depend on the last mission that you did before the session. For example, if you choose to kill Trevor in the final mission, Michael will say that he could not be better, and that he finally retired from crime after wiping Trevor off the face of the planet. However, if the player chooses to save both Trevor and Franklin, Michael will say that he is still in a lot of trouble. Midway through the conversation, you will have a choice to either accept or reject Dr. Friedlander's advice, which is basically to embrace his criminal nature and stop pretending to be a good person. Michael will react differently depending on the choice, either agreeing with the doctor or calling him a fraud. However, the choice does not affect the outcome of the mission, as Dr. Friedlander will soon drop a bombshell on Michael. He is leaving Los Santos and selling Michael's case notes to a TV show for a lot of money. He claims that Michael is a classic borderline and a psychopath, and that he is the most selfish person he has ever met. He also says that he is not afraid of Michael and that he can't help him anymore. This enrages Michael, who feels betrayed and humiliated by his therapist. He chases Dr. Friedlander to the parking lot, where the doctor gets into a car and tries to escape. At this point, the player has another choice, to either kill or spare Dr. Friedlander. If the player chooses to kill him, Michael can either shoot him in the car or chase him to the Del Perro Pier and run him over. If the player chooses to spare him, Michael will let him go, but curse him and warn him to stay away from him and his family. So, what are the consequences of this choice, and what choice is really the best, in my opinion? Well, the choice does not have any major impact on the gameplay or the storyline, as Dr. Friedlander is a minor character, and his death or survival does not affect any other missions or events, but the choice does have some minor effects on the game world and the character's reactions. For example, if the player kills Dr. Friedlander, 
they will receive a small amount of money, around $2,000 from his body, and they will also hear a news report on the radio about his death, which will mention that he was working on a TV show about a deranged patient. If the player spares Dr. Friedlander, they will not receive any money, and they will also hear a different news report on the radio, which will mention that he left Los Santos and is working on a TV show about a fascinating patient. The choice also affects how Michael's family and friends will react to him. If the player calls Amanda, Jimmy, Tracy, Franklin or Trevor after the mission, they will have different dialogue depending on whether Dr. Friedlander is alive or dead. For example, if the player kills Dr. Friedlander, Amanda will be shocked and angry and will accuse Michael of being a murderer and a psychopath. She will also say that she regrets moving back in with him and that she hopes he gets arrested. However, if you spare Dr. Friedlander, Amanda will be more sympathetic and understanding and will say that she is proud of Michael for not killing him and that she hopes he can find a better therapist. Similarly, Jimmy, Tracy, Franklin, and Trevor will have different reactions depending on the choice, either expressing concern, disappointment, approval, or indifference. So, what is my opinion on this choice? Well, I think that there is no definitive answer, as both choices have their pros and cons, and it depends on how you view Michael and his character development. On one hand, killing Dr. Friedlander can be seen as satisfying and justified revenge for his betrayal and exploitation of Michael, and as a way of eliminating a potential threat to Michael's reputation and safety. It can also be seen as a way of staying true to Michael's criminal nature and his violent tendencies, and as a way of rejecting Dr. Friedlander's advice and his diagnosis of Michael as a psychopath. On the other hand, sparing Dr. Friedlander can be seen as a sign of mercy and restraint for his former therapist, and as a way of avoiding unnecessary bloodshed and trouble. It can also be seen as a way of accepting Dr. Friedlander's advice and his diagnosis of Michael as a psychopath, as well as a way of acknowledging Michael's flaws and his need for help. Personally, I prefer to spare Dr. Friedlander, as I think that killing him is not worth it, and that it does not solve anything. I think that Michael is not a complete psychopath but rather a complex and conflicted character who has some redeeming qualities and some potential for change. I think that Michael does care about his family and his friends, and that he does want to be happy and to live a normal life. I think that sparing Dr. Friedlander would show that Michael has some self-control and some morality, and that he is not a mindless killer. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Do you prefer to kill or spare Dr. Friedlander? Why? Let me know in the comments below. The next choice is in the Mission Eye in the Sky, where Franklin and Trevor have to work together to steal a rare Z-type car for Devin Weston. This mission can be started by either Trevor or Franklin. If you start as Trevor, you have to go to the Mission Row police station and pretend to be a cop. You will then board a helicopter equipped with a special camera that can scan people's faces and track their movements. If you start as Franklin, you have to wait at the FIB lot until Trevor arrives in the helicopter. The objective of this mission is to find and follow Chad Mulligan, the owner of the Z-Type, and then steal his car. To do this, you have to switch between Trevor and Franklin. Trevor will use the camera to scan the targets and identify Mulligan, while Franklin will follow him on the ground. There are some challenges and choices in this mission that can affect the outcome and the difficulty. For example, you have to listen to three conversations while scanning the targets to get the gold medal. You also have to find Mulligan's hiding place on the first attempt. If you fail to do so, he will drive away, and you will have to chase him through the streets, which can be tricky. Another choice you have to make is how to approach Mulligan when he is in his car. You can either use a stun gun to knock him out, or shoot him with a regular gun. The stun gun option is more stealthy and less violent, but it can be harder to aim. The regular gun option is more direct and easier, but it can alert the cops and cause more damage to the car. The final choice you have to make is whether to deliver the car to Devin Weston at the airport, or to keep it for yourself. If you deliver the car, you will complete the mission and get paid by Weston, but you will also lose the opportunity to own the Z-Type, which is one of the most expensive and fastest cars in the game. If you keep the car, you will fail the mission and anger Weston, but you will also get to keep the Z-Type in your garage. In my opinion, the best choice is to deliver the car to Weston, because it will advance the story and unlock the next mission, Kaida Libre. The Z-Type is a nice car, but it is not worth losing the progress and the money. You can always buy the Z-Type later from the Legendary Motorsport website if you have enough cash. Now let's look at one of the most memorable missions in the game, 
Mr. Phillips. This is the first mission where we get to play as Trevor. The, the mission starts with a cutscene where Franklin visits Michael at his house, and they celebrate their successful heist. However, their conversation is interrupted by Dave Norton, the FIB agent who faked Michael's death and offered him a deal. Dave warns Michael that his involvement in the heist has alerted the FIB and may alert Trevor, his former partner. Michael dismisses this, claiming that Trevor must be dead and denying any involvement in the heist. Meanwhile, in Sandy Shores, Trevor is having some private moments with Ashley Butler, the girlfriend of Johnny Klebitz, the leader of the Lost MC. He overhears the news report about the heist on TV and recognizes Michael's voice. He gets angry and confronts Johnny, who is waiting outside his trailer. Trevor accuses Johnny of betraying him and kills him by smashing his head on the ground. He then orders his associates, Wade and Ron, to get in his truck and declares that they are going to war with the lost MC. What a psycho, right? The first objective of the mission is to drive to Grapeseed, where Trevor suspects that the lost MC are hiding. On the way, Trevor explains to Wade and Ron that he used to work with Michael and that he thinks that he is still alive. He also tells them that he hates bikers and that he wants to wipe out the lost MC. Trevor then kills a bunch of people and finally goes to where Ortega, the leader of the Aztecas, a rival gang, lives. Trevor decides to pay him a visit and push his trailer into the river. Trevor can either kill Ortega or spare him. If Trevor spares Ortega, he will warn him to stay away from his business and that he will come back for him. If Trevor kills Ortega, he will say that he is doing him a favor and that he is the king of the castle. The mission has several choices and consequences, such as whether to kill or spare Ortega, and whether to kill or chase the bikers. These choices will affect the difficulty and outcome of the mission, as well as future interactions with the characters. For example, if Trevor spares Ortega, he will appear later in the game as an enemy and will try to kill Trevor. If Trevor kills Ortega, he will eliminate a potential threat, but he will also anger the Aztecas, who will become hostile to him. In my opinion, the best choice for this mission is to kill Ortega and chase the bikers. This way, Trevor will have fewer enemies to deal with. It matches his nature. Now let's take a look at the Strangers and Freaks mission What Lies Beneath, which is the final mission for Abigail Mathers, the widow of a marine researcher who died under mysterious circumstances. In this mission, Michael has to collect 30 submarine parts scattered around the ocean floor for Abigail, who claims that she wants to honor her husband's legacy and expose the truth about his death. However, as Michael finds out, there is more to this story than meets the eye. After collecting all the submarine parts, Michael meets Abigail at the Sonar Collections Dock in Polito Cove, where she thanks him for his help and gives him a meager $10 and an autographed photo of her ex-lover as a reward. Michael is not impressed by this and starts asking questions about her husband's death, which makes Abigail nervous. She reveals that her husband was working on a project called Deep Sea, which involved exploring the ocean depths and discovering new life forms. However, he also discovered something else, a sunken UFO. Abigail admits that she sabotaged her husband's submarine, causing it to explode and kill him because she was afraid of what he would do with the UFO. She says that he was obsessed with aliens and wanted to make contact with them, even if it meant endangering the world. She also says that she sold the submarine parts to a collector, who paid her a lot of money for them. Michael is shocked and angry by this revelation, and he has to make a choice. Either let Abigail go, or kill her. The choice is up to you, and it has no impact on the game's story or outcome. If you let Abigail go, Michael will say that he doesn't care about her or her husband and that he just wants to forget about the whole thing. He will also say that he hopes she can live with herself after what she did. Abigail will then drive away, and Michael will throw the photo into the sea. If you decide to kill Abigail, Michael will say that she deserves to die for what she did, and that he can't let her get away with murder. He will also say that he doesn't care about the UFO or the aliens, and that he just wants justice. Abigail will try to run away, but Michael will chase her and kill her either by shooting her, blowing up her car, or running her over. In my opinion, the best choice is to kill Abigail, because she is a cold-blooded killer who betrayed and murdered her husband, and then lied and manipulated Michael into doing her dirty work. She also showed no remorse or gratitude for Michael's help, and she tried to bribe him with a cheap reward. By killing her, Michael is avenging her husband's death and preventing her from profiting from his work. The next choice is in the Mission Paparazzo, Reality Check which is the final mission for the Strangers and Freaks character Beverly Felton. 
This mission is available after completing Paparazzo, the Highness, where you have to take pictures of Poppy Mitchell and Princess Georgina for Beverly. So Beverly is a paparazzo who hires Franklin to help him with his celebrity photography business. He promises to pay Franklin for his work, but he turns out to be a liar and a fraud. He uses Franklin's photos to create a reality show about himself, and he doesn't give Franklin any credit or money. In this mission, Franklin confronts Beverly and demands his payment, but Beverly dismisses him and tries to get rid of him. At this point, you have a choice. You can either kill Beverly and his crew or spare them and walk away. This choice will affect the outcome of the mission and the 100% completion of the game. If you kill Beverly and his crew, you will get a gold medal for this mission, and you will also get some money from their bodies. However, you will also get a two-star wanted level, and you will lose Beverly as a contact. If you spare Beverly and his crew, you will not get a gold medal for this mission, and you will not get any money from them. However, you will not get the desired level, and you will keep Beverly as a contact. You can still call him and listen to his annoying messages, or you can ignore him. In my opinion, the best choice is to kill Beverly and his crew. This is because Beverly is a jerk who deserves to die, and you will get some satisfaction and revenge for his betrayal. You will also get a gold medal for this mission, which is required for 100% completion of the game. The money you get from their bodies is not much, but it's better than nothing. The wanted level is not a big deal, as you can easily lose the cops or use a cheat code. The only downside is that you will lose Beverly as a contact, but that's not a loss at all. He is annoying and useless, and you don't need him for anything else in the game. The last one. The last one is a Strangers and Freaks mission that only becomes available after you have completed the game to 100%. It can only be played by Franklin, and it may take some time to appear on the map. You will find it as a green question mark in the Mount Chiliad Forest. In this mission, you will encounter a hunter who is hunting for the last Sasquatch, or Bigfoot, in the woods. He will convince you to help him track down the beast and kill it. You will have to follow some clues and chase the Sasquatch through the forest while avoiding or killing other animals along the way. Once you catch up with the Sasquatch, you will have to shoot it one more time to make it fall. Then, you will approach it and discover a shocking truth. The Sasquatch is actually a man in a costume who has a fetish for role-playing as a fantastical beast. He will beg you to kill him and end his misery, or let him go and keep his secret. This is where you have to make a choice. Spare or kill the Sasquatch man. If you spare him, he will run away into the woods, and you will never see him again. If you kill him, he will die, and you will get a text message from the hunter thanking you for your help and saying that he will send you a stuffed Sasquatch head as a reward. So, what is the best choice? Well, there is no right or wrong answer here, as if you kill the Sasquatch man, you will end his suffering and put an end to his bizarre fantasy. You will also get the reward, which is a nice trophy for your collection. However, you will also commit murder and take away the life of a human being who may have been harmless and innocent. Personally, I would choose to spare the Sasquatch man because I think that killing him is too harsh and unnecessary. He may be a freak, but he is not a threat, and he deserves a chance to live. Besides, I don't really care about the reward, and I think that having a stuffed Sasquatch head in my house would be creepy and disturbing. Just kidding, lol. The next choice is for Michael, on a crazy but cool mission. The Epsilon Program. The Epsilon Program is a parody of Scientology and it has a lot of weird and funny missions, such as wearing a special robe for 10 days, running 5 miles in the desert, and stealing celebrity items. To start this mission, you need to have completed all the previous Epsilon missions and donated a total of $50,000 to the cult. The mission starts with Michael meeting Chris Formage, the leader of the Epsilon program, who tells him that he needs to help him transport some apocalypse funds offshore to the Cayman Islands. Michael agrees and gets in a blue tailgater that is loaded with duffel bags full of cash. He then follows a convoy of other Epsilon vehicles to the drop-off point behind Los Santos Customs. Now, here is where the mission gets interesting. You have three choices on how to complete it. The first choice is to follow the instructions and deliver the car to the helicopter. If you do this, an Epsilon member will lead you to a parking lot where he will give you your reward. A rusty tractor. Yes, that's right. A tractor. That's all you get for your efforts and donations. You can keep the tractor or destroy it. It doesn't matter. This is the worst choice, obviously, and you will not meet any gold medal requirements. The second choice is to betray the Epsilon program and take the money for yourself. 
You can do this by either fleeing the convoy at any point, or attacking the Epsilon members at the drop-off point. If you do this, you will have to deal with a lot of angry and heavily armed Epsilon guards, as well as a helicopter that will chase you. You will also get a 3-star wanted level that you need to lose. Once you do that, you will keep the money, which amounts to $2.1 million. This is the best choice, in my opinion, because you get a lot of cash and you get to stick it to the cult. You will also get the gold medal requirements for killing all the Epsilon security and stealing the money. The third choice is a variation of the second one, where you can get both the money and the tractor. To do this, you need to follow the convoy to the drop-off point and get out of the car. As soon as the cult member gets out of the helicopter, you need to start shooting at the guards and lose the wanted level. Then, you need to go back to the parking lot where the tractor is and take it. You can then store it in your garage or sell it for a few bucks. This way, you get the best of both worlds, but it's a bit more tricky and risky. Totally unnecessary. Now for the ending. Come on, we've got to do this too. I can't leave it out. As you may know, GTA 5 has three dramatically different endings depending on the choice you make as Franklin after the final heist. You can either kill Trevor, kill Michael, or team up with both of them to take down your enemies. Each ending has its own consequences and implications for the characters and the story. Let's take a look at each one and see what they hold. Ending A. Kill Trevor. If you choose to kill Trevor, you will trigger the mission, Something Sensible. Franklin sets up a meeting with Trevor, where he tells him that he has to kill him because he is too crazy and unpredictable. Trevor feels betrayed and tries to escape in his truck, but Michael shows up and rams him into a gas tanker. Trevor is badly injured and falls into the spilled fuel, where he curses Franklin and Michael for being traitors. Franklin or Michael then shoots the fuel, igniting it and burning Trevor to death. This ending is arguably the most cruel one, as it involves killing one of the main protagonists in a brutal way. Trevor may be a psychopath, but he is also loyal and honest to his friends. He never betrayed Franklin or Michael, and he even helped them with the heist. He also has a softer side, as he cares for his mother and some of his associates. Killing Trevor means losing a valuable ally and a unique character. It also means that Michael and Franklin will split the heist money between themselves, which is a greedy and selfish move. Ending B. Kill Michael. If you choose to kill Michael, you will trigger the mission the times come. Franklin meets up with Michael and tells him that he has to kill him because he is a liability and a backstabber. Michael is shocked and angry, and he tries to reason with Franklin. He then runs away and Franklin chases him to a factory. They end up on a metal platform, where Franklin has the option to either push Michael off or spare him. If he pushes him, Michael falls to his death. If he spares him, Michael grabs Franklin's hand and then lets go, falling to his death anyway. This ending is also very cruel, as it involves killing another main protagonist and a mentor figure. Michael may have his flaws, but he is also a skilled and experienced criminal who helped Franklin rise in the underworld. He also has a family that he loves and tries to protect, despite his problems. Killing Michael means losing a friend and a teacher, as well as hurting his wife and children. It also means that Franklin will get nothing from the heist, as Michael's cut will go to his family. This ending also shows that Franklin is easily manipulated by Devin Weston, who is a ruthless and corrupt businessman. Ending C. Death Wish. If you choose to team up with Trevor and Michael, you will trigger the mission the third way. Franklin calls Lester and tells him that he wants to save both of his friends and take out their enemies. Lester agrees and helps him set up a plan. Franklin meets up with Trevor and Michael and tells them that they have to work together and fight back. They agree and head to a foundry, where they ambush and kill the FIB agents and Meriwether mercenaries sent by Steve Haynes and Devin Weston. They then split up and hunted down their remaining enemies, Wei Cheng, Stretch, and Steve Haynes. After killing them, they regroup and kidnap Devin Weston from his mansion. They drive him to a cliff in the trunk of his car, where they mock him and then push the car off the edge killing him. This ending is arguably the best one, as it involves saving both of your friends and getting rid of your enemies. Trevor and Michael may have their differences, but they also have a bond that goes back to their days as bank robbers. They also respect and appreciate Franklin for his skills and loyalty. Teaming up with them means keeping the trio intact and showing them that you value their friendship. It also means that you get to keep your heist money and share it with them. Most people choose this one without a doubt. So, these are the three endings of GTA V. 
Which one do you think is the best, and which one is the most cruel? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I think that ending C is the best one, as it gives you the most satisfying and rewarding outcome. Endings A and B are both cruel and depressing, as they involve killing your friends and losing your money. But of course, this is just my opinion, and you may have a different one. Finally, we are done, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Now I want you to tell me which choices were the most satisfying to you in GTA 6. I really want to know. Also, if you want to show some support, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Take care and have a nice day. Peace out.